How do you stop a man made of stone? And then we take a look at possibly one of the most powerful stories we've ever covered. Is it possible to hack the universe today on Dead Rabbit Radio? Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. I hope you guys have a great weekend coming up. I hope this is the prelude to an awesome, awesome weekend. We got a lot of stuff to cover, so we're going to get started. First off, I want to give a shout out to our newest Patreon supporter, Newcom. Newcom, thank you so much for supporting the show. Really, really helps out a lot. Newcom actually just graduated from high school. Class in Newcom High! (sighs) I don't know that he, he's probably too young to remember that reference, but Newcomb, thank you so much for supporting the show. You are going to be our captain, our dude, this episode. If you can't support the Patreon, that's fine as well. Just help get the word out about the show. Really, really helps the show grow. It's totally awesome. And also, we have a merch store, and that is in the links. We also have a Minecraft server, so if you guys want to play some Minecraft with me and other fans of the show, Minecraft server in the notes as well. So, Nukem, I want you to snap, get ready to snap your fingers, because you're going to have a magical power. We're actually going to just go back to the end of the last episode. So, you ready? You ready? Snap your fingers now. Previously on Dead Rabbit, everyone of the Cherokee Nation, get together. Hey, everyone. Hey, listen to this dude. He's talking. Yes, yes. There is this woman called Spearfinger. Ah, stack. Ah, I've been stabbed. I've been stabbed in my liver. Dramatic quick cuts. A bunch of people people laying around. No livers on. There's a whole bunch of them. How do we defeat Spearfinger? And then the medicine man is like throwing dust and stuff. And he goes, I explained it on the last episode, but here's a quick overview. Spearfinger can be killed if you chop her hand off because her heart is in her hand. And everyone's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Except for Spearfinger. She didn't like that. She's all, shh, I thought that was a secret. But Spearfinger had a mortal enemy and then like cuts, quick cuts of this man in a cave. His name was Stone Man. And he also like ate people's livers and stuff. So it's more quick cuts, more bodies. Everyone's starting to get motion sickness from this flashback. This auditory flashback. And so anyway, to make a long story short, the last episode, now the medicine man's just totally, he's like, whatever, I'm giving up the gimmick. The last episode was about this woman, this cryptid, this monster uh, that preyed on people of the Cherokee Nation in Northern Carolina and Tennessee way, way back in the day. And she was stabbing people and eating their livers. Now, she had the weakness. Now I'm doing a recap of the recap. She had a weakness of the heart in her hand. They chopped her hand off, but she also had a mortal enemy named Stone Man. And when Stone Man saw that Spearfinger had been killed, they both traveled in the same territories. They both eat human livers, and they both have the power of stone. So the Stone Man sees this happen. It'd probably be better off if you just listened to yesterday's episode at this point. Stone Man sees that Spearfinger was killed, and he whistles to himself. Woo! Woo! He cat calls himself. And he goes, oh, well, finally, my only source of competition for food has been killed, and no one will ever guess my weakness. And so he walked off into the night, singing a song about eating human livers. And now, the next episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. So, it's funny because Stone Man's story isn't super long, and it's actually, when I was reading about Spearfinger, every version of the Spearfinger legend ended with, and no one knew how to defeat Stone Man, so he simply walked away into the night. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a weird ending. And then I found another one, and they're like, and little do they know that Stone Man was watching them from afar, going, no one will ever guess my weakness. And he walked in the... I'm like, what is this dude's... I didn't know that the medicine men of the Cherokee Nation like were building a shared universe. <laughs> like They were having these separate... Le- oh, if you want to know the rest of the legend... You gotta come back next summer. And then eventually all of their legends form together to make one... I guess that's actually what mythology is, really. It's a shared universe. Some guy makes up Zeus, and a couple years later someone made up Artemis, and then go, whoa, what if they're related? And eventually everyone sat down, and Socrates and Herodotus were sitting there and talking about, like, this shit. They're basically the Kevin Feige and Zack Snyder of the ancient world. 
So here's the thing. So to ma- I'm going to make a long story short because to be honest, I recorded a 20 minute version of this and went on and on and on. So we have this. We have Spearfinger. We talked about her. We have Stone Man who says nobody knows his weakness. And he continued his reign of terror. He would just go into villages. He'd eat people's livers. Now, as far as I could tell, he wasn't a shapeshifter. He had to be more slick. But he he was an old man. He looked like an old man. He looked totally normal until you tried bashing his brains in with the club. Club would break. He'd turn around. <sighs> and then your liver would be gone. So he had the same power set, basically, except for shapeshifting. He eated your liver. He was indestructible. Once his main nemesis was gone, he could eat all the livers he wanted, as long as he could catch them on his old man legs. He also had this stick that was capable of doing two things. One, far more badass than the other. First off, you could take the stick, and he could throw it, and it would turn into any form of rock. You're like, Jason, that's that's actually... He throws it, and he's like, oh no! I threw it in a geology museum place, whatever they're called, probably just geology museum. Where's my wand? And it's like mixing with a bunch of rocks. No, he could throw it and make rock structures. So, oh no, there's this chasm I have to cross. Giant, like bridge, right? Or, I don't know. I can't think of another reason why you'd want a big rock in front of you. Oh no, um, it's really hot and I want some shade. But he could do that. And he could, like, I think, wave it and, like, rocks would fly around and stuff like that. I don't know. I could be just retconning. I could just be making that part up. There's not a lot of information on Stone Man. But his other ability that the stick would allow him to do is he could smell he could smell people with it. So there's a story I was able to find. This hunter was out in the woods hunting. He sees this old man walking around with this stick. And he's, like, smelling the stick. He was pointing it in different directions and then s- smelling it. Point in another direction, smell it. Point in another direction, smell it. And then eventually he points it in a direction. I know that the suspense is killing you, right? Will he ever smell a human? He points it in a certain direction, smells it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the stuff. That's a good old homo sapien. And he then starts walking in the direction and throws the stick and makes a big bridge. And a hunter's watching all this stuff. Now, the hunter knows the direction he's headed in is where his tribe is in. So, hunter beats feet back to his tribe and he's like, dude, you guys. Three guesses to what I just saw. So the hunter's telling the story. The medicine man of the village hops out of his house and he goes, I'm stop you right there, dude. Like, I heard what you were saying. I wasn't supposed to be eavesdropping is rude, but I need you to find seven women who are menstruating right now. And they're like, wait, what? We're talking about smell. Medicine man goes, I need seven menstruating women right now. And this isn't for my sicko hobby that I have. And everyone's like, Doing the side eye. They're like, he does have that weird thing for menstruating women. I know I normally do. I need seven menstruating women and maybe an extra two for me, you know? And people are getting grossed out. He's like, okay, just the seven. Just the seven. Don't take them to my hut. Put them on the road leading into town. So everyone's a little skeeved out by what's going on. Medicine man's like, hmm, maybe I will get an extra two. Long story short, I'm not joking. This segment is now taking me 30 minutes to record. have to keep editing stuff out. Seven menstruating women are now standing on the road. I could have just jumped to that part, right? I could have just said, Hey, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rap Radio. Seven menstruating women standing on a road. And uh, Stone Man cannot walk past the menstruating woman. I don't know how they figured this out. I don't know what the medicine man was doing to be like, You know what? We've tried stabbing it, shooting arrows at it, and clubbing it on the brain, but a menstruating woman. So... Stone Man's walking into the village, and he see. Oh, and the women were completely naked, and he walks past. Imagine this: you're walking into town, whether or not you want to eat people's livers, maybe you're just gonna go buy a Domino's pizza. You're walking into town, you see a naked menstruating woman is standing by the side of the street. Now he walks by, and he goes, "Oh no, dear, you're sick." Ugh. And he walks by her, and then he sees the next naked menstruating woman, and he's like, "Oh no." Oh, that's so... And he begins throwing up blood. Now, I hope that they... Now that I'm thinking about it, I hope they told the menstruating women, hey, by the way, some monster's gonna walk by, so if he starts acting weird, just be normal. Because if someone just said, hey, stand out there naked on your period, and didn't explain to you why, and you see an old man walking down the street, and he goes, oh my dear, you're so sick. But we might have to do a little bit of therapy sessions after that. Anyway, so by the time he gets to the seventh woman, 
He's done. He just falls over and uh, and blood is pouring out of his mouth. And at that point, the warriors come out of the village. And the medicine man shows up and they stake him with seven stakes into the ground. Stick, stick, ah, stick, stick, stick. And then they built this giant funeral pyre on him, like just threw a bunch of wood and stuff on him. And then lit him on fire. He's like, ah. And then he he lived for like, like 12 hours after that. He slowly burned and what was interesting, I mean, well, it's all interesting. A man was killed by walking past seven menstruating women. As he's burning, he goes, medicine, medicine man, come here. Uh, uh, and medicine man gets close and the stone man goes. <laughs> but instead of that, he was actually saying real words. And he taught the medicine man all the secrets. To, like, the universe and stuff. Isn't that eloquent? He's telling the old man this stuff. And then, eventually, after 12 hours, he just turns to dust. He burns up. And then there was two things laying there. There was a magical rock, like a a red magical rock, and a pile of red, like, goo. Which tends to come out of ten bodies. Not the magical rock thing. And it was funny, because the medicine man picks up the rock, and they're like, oh, is that a new, like, gem for our village? And he goes, no, this is for me, and he puts it in his pocket. He does not give anyone else the access to the magical rock, but there's a pile of goo there, red goo, and the medicine man goes, I'm gonna keep the rock, like, for payment for coming up with this plan, and then if you can get seven ladies to stop by my place later, and the warriors are, like, shaking their head. He's like, fine, fine, I'll just keep the rock. And... He takes the red goo and he he draws on the villagers' faces and he goes, tell me what you wish for. And they'd be like, I wish to be a great hunter. And he'd go, done. And then the guy would become a great hunter. And a couple of people wished for like long life or something like that. And then, so yeah, and then everyone lived happily ever after, I guess. The liver-eating monster was destroyed and um, <laughs> everyone got their wish granted. Everyone got their wish granted. Now, I don't think you could have said it. I would have wished, I would have been like, old man... Sorry, that's disrespectful. Medicine man, put this ink on my face. I wish for your magical gem. And then it appears in my hand. I don't actually think... I don't actually think about it. I don't think he became the genie. I just think it was a way of blessing them. And maybe the liver dude... Uh, Stone man, I guess, was his technical name. Maybe that was his way of giving back to all the people. It turns out that he wasn't eating our livers. We were eating his. Maybe it's like a lesson like that or something like that. He was giving back to the community. His sacrifice will not be in vain. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I actually, I, it took, I don't know how long this is going to be edited, but that honestly took me around 40 minutes to record. So, so I look over, throw my arm around Nukem. I'm like, you ready to get out of here, kid? Nukem just looks, silently gives me a nod. <laughs> He's throwing up blood. He's like, my weakness is menstruating women too. Run, run, run. Throw them the keys of the carpenter copter. Let's get inside, guys. We are headed out. We're leaving behind old timey America. We are headed out to the center of the universe. It's an ambitious place to be flying the carpenter copter, but Newcomb can do it. No, 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 no. We're flying. There's black holes everywhere. Two black holes are like hitting each other, and then they become a blacker hole. I bet you that's a thing. Science, figure it out. We're flying around. Now, there's some weird stuff involved in this story. And and I kind of want to do a little exercise first. I came across... We're going to be talking about hacking the universe. That's why we're in this place with nothing but black holes. <laughs> you comes like, come on, man. My first time flying the carpet copter. I have to navigate event horizons. Yeah, yeah. Quit whining. <laughs> Helicopter's flying around. Now... First off, I want to do a little exercise with you guys. There's this thing, you know me, I'm not a big, I'm not really big into like channeling and like aliens talking to people's brains and stuff like that. I'm usually pretty skeptical of that, but I came across this thing that came from an alien. All that being said, I came across this thing online, uh, supposedly from some sort of alien angel something called Abraham. So there's this woman named Esther Hicks, and some of you guys are like, oh, great. <laughs> some of you guys are shutting the podcast off now. Now, I don't know a lot about Esther Hicks. I do know that she believes she's channeling some sort of being called Abraham Hicks, and she was also one of the, this is how she perked my attention up. She's one of the original people who was involved in The Secret, you know, that book by, what was it, Rhonda 
Binds or something, Brines or something like that. And you guys know I'm a big law of attraction visualization guy. So this kind of popped up on my radar. Now, I, I, I'm gonna, I, we're, I don't know much about Esther Hicks, so I'm not really going to talk about her much. I know that she was originally involved in The Secret, and then there was some sort of falling out between the two people. And I always think it's weird when... And you see this a lot. You see this a lot. People believe that they have connections to the universe or connected to these higher powers or know all these secrets. And they get involved in lawsuits. Isn't that weird? Like, this isn't abnormal. A lot of times when you look at these self-help groups, there's a lot of lawsuits involved. So, I mean, everyone's bogged down by mortal concerns, right? But anyway, she doesn't work with the secret like they took her out of the documentary. But apparently it was kind of like a just a schism over like long-term rights. It's just weird. Like, again, you guys... Hold the keys to reality, but you need to have this percentage of royalties. Whatever. I'm not knocking Esther Hicks. I don't know enough about Esther Hicks. Um, But I did see this. I thought this was... Maybe we'll go back and look at Esther Hicks if if it turns out to be interesting. But I came across this. Now, again, it came from a space alien uh, from 10,000 years ago. But let's try it out. Let's try it out because there are some interesting things in this. We're going to try to hack the universe right now. I want you... For 17 seconds, don't worry, I'll time it. Don't if you don't pull out your stopwatch, I'll time it. For 17 seconds, I want you to think of something only positive. Only positive. So say you want more money, or you want to be more successful at your job, or have more free time or whatever. I want you to think of something for 17 seconds. We're gonna start right now. Now, it's, it's incredibly difficult. And you may think, Jason, no, it's not. I did it. We have a tendency within the first 10 seconds to think negatively. I want to have more money, but I have so many bills to pay. I would love to have that new car go on that cruise, but how am I going to afford it? I don't have any time. It's very, very hard to think positively for 17 seconds. But according to Abraham, the space alien I've done absolutely no research on, if you can think about something for 17 seconds, it's the if you think of a purely positive thought with no contradictions or no negativity in it, it's equal to 2,000 hours of work. And you're just like, Jason, do you actually believe that? I don't know. I don't know. I do think it's interesting that it's very, very hard to think of something positively for 17 seconds. You have to train yourself to focus, focus, focus. And what's interesting is I was looking at this thing that Abraham Hicks was channeling. Ridiculous. I'm even considering this a legit source. But to start off as an exercise, don't think of, I want more money. Just think of happy, happy, happy. Just keep thinking how happy you are. Start off at little base levels. Don't try to go for like the mega millions thing. Just start off thinking, I'm in a good mood. I'm in a really, really good mood. Today's a really, really good day. And it's funny because even as I'm saying that, I can feel the doubt creep in. It's very hard to do, think of a positive thought, especially about yourself for 17 seconds. But the goal isn't to just do it 17 seconds. You're supposed to do it for 68 seconds in four 17 second intervals. So you think of a positive thought for 17 seconds. And then you do it for another 17 seconds. And then you do it for another 17 seconds. So you kind of have to train your way up. Now, why 17 seconds, 68 seconds? You get into this weird, again, space numerology stuff. And I know I'm probably giving mixed messages because I'm like, hey, guys, let's do this exercise. It might be super powerful, but I don't trust anything about where it came from. (laughs) To be honest, I've done no research. Fair enough. But I think the fact that it's so difficult to do is what makes me think there might be something to it. So, I want you guys to do that. I'm going to be doing that this weekend. I'm going to be setting aside 68 seconds a day. I know it's a long time. Let's set aside some time and really focus on something positive about yourself for 17 seconds. And then do it for another 17 seconds. And seeing how it is very, very difficult. Now, I won't be here to time you the whole time. You will eventually have to pull out a stopwatch. But 
I think that's an interesting exercise. And I think that is one way that you can... The big thing about Law of Attraction is it doesn't work. I ask so much to get this hot chick, but she doesn't know the time of day. It's really hard to use the Law of Attraction where it is affecting someone specific because their visual... They may be thinking for 17 seconds, oh my God, I hope they never call me again. So... It's easier to do it with just kind of elemental forces. but So that's a little homework for this week, and I want you guys to do that, and I want you guys to try that out. But that is just a little taste of what I want to talk about when we're talking about hacking the universe. Let's go ahead, Newcomb. Let's fly into one of those black holes. We're actually headed back to Earth. <laughs> Helicopters now flying over beautiful Hood River, Oregon. Let's whip out our cell phones. So... There's a new app out called Randonautica. And what's interesting, there's a couple different interesting things about it. But I think one of the most interesting things, and again, this is part of the mystery that can be solved right away. I just need one person's help. I got a request to cover this story not too long ago. And I actually did a series of live streams where I was testing it. And then I went to do the story and I couldn't find out who recommended this story. I looked all over Twitter, all through my email, all through YouTube, all through Instagram. Could not find who recommended me this story. And I was like, what? I know someone brought this. I actually remembered seeing the logo of the app in my DMs, but I didn't know where it was at. And then I, I was combing through all this stuff. I kept putting the story off. I was supposed to do this story last week. And then I came across a note I had written myself that said Insta Nick 44 which means Instagram, someone on Instagram named Nick44, I went to my DMs, wasn't there. I'm not friends with anyone named Nick44. The account's gone. Q Zarafim music, whatever that thing's called. Now, obviously, Nick44, if you listen to the show, you can go, oh, my account got deleted. I was doing this, that, or the other thing, or it got hacked or something like that. But as far as I can tell, Nick44, I don't follow them. They don't follow me. I couldn't even find the account when I searched for it. Again, I'm, I am not in any way, shape, or form saying that Nick44 sent me this from an alternate reality. And since I've used the Randonautica app in real life, I've shifted into one where Nick44 doesn't exist. I am in no way saying that. <laughs> I'm slightly implying it. But if Nick44 gets back to me and I can see the DM they sent me, because anyone can make up a fake Nick44 account at this point, but maybe it was just an error on my part but yeah i I am slightly implying that nick 44 never existed in the first place nick 44 if you do exist in this reality thank you for recommending the story also john from scar group we were talking about this as well so i want to give him a shout out but rando nautica let's take a look at this this is an app where you pull it up on your phone and you go bunny rabbits bunny rabbits bunny rabbits bunny rabbits Beep, and then you hit a button, and it will give you a random location in your area. And the theory is you go there, and you will see a bunny rabbit, or an outline of a rabbit, or a rabbit foot, or a Volkswagen rabbit, or a copy of 8 Mile on DVD. Th- this is the theory behind Randonautica. And it gives you a truly random places to go because it uses quantum mechanics. It's not, or a quantum number generator, I think is the exact term, a quantum random number generator. They said a normal number generator does have some sort of pattern to it, but a quantum random number generator can truly take you to a completely random place. You can also do the opposite. You can go bunny rabbits, bunny rabbits, bunny rabbits, and then it will send you to a place where there is likely no bunny rabbits, say Elmer Fudd's house. So it has an attractor setting. It has a void setting. And it's become the hot new toy among millennials and Generation Z and podcast hosts and really anyone who has a smartphone. There's been a couple articles written about this. Now, what's interesting was I said this earlier. I had come across a story months ago before Nick44 slipped into our reality and told me about it. But what I had heard it described as is something totally different than what it is now, which I find another odd thing. But let's look at what it is now. Let's look at what it supposedly is now. You think about something, you go to the location on the app, you'll see it. You have a whole subreddit dedicated to these people. They'll say, I was thinking of something unexplainable. They go out to the location, there's a a chair in the middle of a field. What? A super unexplainable bunch of upvotes. I thought of the Illuminati. This is actually a real one. I thought of the Illuminati 
And I went out in the field. This has to be a joke, but Pia got the got the upvotes. People thought it was real, or I'm, or or I assume that humanity is not as insane as it is. This guy was thinking about the Illuminati. He went out in the field and he took videotape of a smashed watermelon and a slice of pizza. And I go, what is a water? What do either of those things have to do with the Illuminati? Ah, I'm not. Apparently, I haven't taken enough red pills. A slice of pizza looks like a what? Triangle. I don't know what the watermelon has to do with anything, but got a bunch of upvotes. Like, so <laughs> I don't want to knock the people who invented Randonautica too much. Obviously, they can make this app. It's really cool. It's free. It'll allow you to have a nice walk. You'll see the Reddit. It's just stuff like that. One guy goes, I was out with my sister. I hadn't even opened the app yet, and an owl flew out of a tree. And then I walked by another tree, and there was a photo of a baby in it. I'm like, that's... that's, First off, where do you expect owls to fly from? Right? That's not super weird. And then, yeah, he took a picture of, like, a birch tree. And in the birch tree is a photo of a newborn baby. Now, to be fair, that is weird. That is weird. But it doesn't, I mean, think, he hasn't even used the app yet. He's just walking down the street and he sees all this stuff. Again, the owl flying out of the tree, that's totally normal. I've seen that if you keep it vague, if you think of sunshine and then you go outside and the sun's in the sky, or if you think of beauty or hope, but those are all too vague, right? You can walk anywhere. You can think of hope and walk into a Walmart and be like, I hope my car doesn't get broken into and ta-da, there you go. So you have all this different stuff. But what's weird about this? What's super weird about this, other than the fact that people are taking photographs of slices of pizza in the woods, is that this is not the app. This is not what I was originally told it was for. Now, again, when I was doing the research for this story, I could not find where I had originally found my sources. So it could be, one, sloppy note-keeping. It's very likely that. Two, I slipped into an alternate dimension. Three, the reason for the program changed because the technology changed. Or four, the reason for the program changed because it's supposed to truly be hidden. Now, out of those four, it's most likely bad note-taking, right? We got to be honest. I probably found the information first and then didn't write down my source, and here we are. But what's interesting is none of the current stuff involving Randonautica... I could not find this replicated. This is how I was originally told this program was supposed to work. Before Nick44 got a hold of me, this was months ago. There is nothing random in life. Let's say you go out for a walk. You're walking down the street. Your goal is to walk to Burrito Barn. And as you're walking to Burrito Barn, you go, you know what, I'm going to take a left here. I never really take a left, but I'm going to take a left here. So you take a left there. It's a longer walk, but it's really nice. Maybe you find a shiny nickel on the ground. Next time you're going to Burrito Barn, you decide, you know what, I'm going to take a left. No, 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 I'm going to keep going straight. And that little bit of a divergence there may have changed something. But none of that is random, right? Those are you still making decisions. That's still the universe wanting you to find that nickel that day or to hesitate on your decision the next day. That's the universe setting things out for you. The way that I was told Randonautica originally worked, and it was actually wasn't even being called Randonautica at that point. The app didn't exist or it wasn't available to the public when I first started looking into this. Was This was a way to hack the universe. The universe has a plan for all of us, and all of those little decisions you make during the day are part of the plan. I tried recording this episode at about 9 o'clock this morning, but there was a bunch of noise in the neighborhood, and I put it aside and played Minecraft and ate lunch and played some more Minecraft, and here I am. But that was the universe's plan for me to be recording the episode right now when it's 80 degrees and I'm dripping with sweat. But none of those events were random. It was all planned out that way. The way that I originally came across Randonautica was this. Because you were using true randomness, because you were using a quantum random number generator, you were doing something that the universe could not expect. The universe could predict you to download the app, and the universe could predict you to hit that button, but the universe could not predict the quantum numbers that assigned you to go to a location. It gave you... The first time I saw it, I did not come across anything with 
you think about something and it takes you there. The goal was you would go someplace completely random. The universe did not expect you in that moment there. It was a way to hack the universe. It was a way to basically glitch out the universe. If you could outthink, outsmart, outlast reality, what would happen? But it's weird because I can't find... And I'm not saying that people still aren't saying that today, but when I'm looking at the main sources for Randonautica and Randonauts, they're talking about finding slices of pizza and owls flying around. I'm not seeing anyone saying, at least the popular ones, again, these things could be out there, but they're not, that using this app can break reality. Because reality has a plan for you, and you're throwing in quantum mechanics to that plan. I'll admit, I will admit, after I did the live stream experience and I was doing these, going on this random walk, it was assigning me to these random locations, places that I don't go normally at all. Just go in there. And then, what, like a day or two later, there was supposed to be a riot in Hood River, which is completely out of character for Hood River. It's kind of in character for me, but completely weird for this town. I remember thinking, did I... Is this, is this, did I crack reality? No, no, no. And I would tell myself, no, no. This is just something that's happening right now. I mean, let's put on our conspiracy caps here for a second. Let's talk about that this is what the app can actually do. It can actually send you to a location that the universe did not expect you there at that time. It has no preloaded assets for you to do or experience. So it's basically doing stuff on the fly. The idea is that the universe rewards you for your exploration. You're basically clipping through the walls of reality, and it's rewarding you with that. It's the law of attraction in a sense, but you're not necessarily attracting anything in Particularly, you're attracting new experiences. You're letting the universe know, hey man, I'm ready to push the bounds. What you got? What you got for me? And when I was looking at the early reports of this a couple months ago, people were saying their lives had changed for the better. Again, that could be completely anecdotal. That could, what it's definitely anecdotal. That could be completely a you know a confirmation bias is what I mean to say. If you do something and your life gets better, you may always thank the machine when I did it. And all of a sudden, there was armed men in the city. And I was like, what in the world's going on? Because I did this, is that why this threat happened here on this particular day? Now, could obviously be confirmation bias. Some people, though, occasionally you would see a report online where people would say, don't do this, don't do this. Ever since I did this, my life has been terrible. And to be honest... That kind of made me hesitate on running the program when I first got it. First off, I had just done an episode about a guy who had an Uber app on his device. and ended up causing a mass shooting because he got possessed by a devil. And I think two days later, I was like, hey, I'm going to try out this new app. Boop. But it did make me concerned because you would occasionally, very rarely, get a report of someone saying, don't use this app. It made my life worse. What's interesting is that if you hack the universe, there's no guarantee that your hack will be beneficial. Just like if you're hacking a video game, you could hack a video game, put an aimbot, put an x-ray vision and all this stuff. But it's also no guarantee that you do the hack wrong and it crashes the game and makes it unplayable. You are seeing lots of people tell these reports of them doing it and having these great experiences afterwards. They're getting jobs. I mean, it, it, see, that was what was weird about it. That was the overwhelming amount of resources I saw back then. And again, they may still exist now, but they're not talking about it on the Reddit. They're talking about mirrors and slices of pizza and chairs in the middle of nowhere. So with our conspiracy caps fully on our head, you have to wonder, is, is this app designed to hack reality? And... When it was being used by a select group of people and their lives were benefiting from it, did people go, this is great, this could be really helpful, but then as it got released to the masses, weird things started happening, bad things started happening, reality began to crack. Now it's just an app so you can find bunny rabbits or pictures of babies in trees. If the app was designed to hack reality and it was hacking reality, You think you would still want to, that would be a selling point, right? Everyone could be a god. Everyone's lives could be better. 
But if it turns out that on average, it's not everyone's lives better and there's a small group of people who kind of mess things up. Because here's the thing. There's little hacks you can do for the universe where you sit and you concentrate for 17 seconds or 68 seconds or do visualization like Wallace Waddles, follow the secret, things like that. Little hacks that you can do to make your life better. That's one thing. But to actually try to defeat the universe at its own game is something far more dangerous. Because whether or not you like it, the universe has a plan for you. It figured it out, and it figured out your piece, your little tiny piece, and how it relates to the supernovas on the edge of the universe. Like, everything is interconnected like that. And if you can figure out a way to upset that plan, who knows what you're doing? One, the plan the universe has set out for you may have a great ending, not just for you, but for the people around you. And you've all of a sudden thrown a wrench into that. And that may mess up the plan for you and for the people around you. But if millions of people start throwing wrenches into the machinery over the course of a few months, who knows what will happen to reality? The universe has a plan. It might not be the most fun plan for you, but it has a plan. It has a plan that was crafted before reality even began. And if you can corrupt that plan with an app that you download from the Google store, things are going to get really weird really fast. Is Randonautica a harmless app? Or is it the last app that humanity will ever download? DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great weekend, guys. I'll see you soon.